Thank you, Jen. And our last speaker before we do our exercise where you're going to use all the information you're learning in this session is Shannon Jones from Austin Travis County Health Department. Well, good, good afternoon. Does everyone stand up and take a quick stretch? We're running a little late, but I think everyone probably would do good by doing a stretch. Before I get started, I would like to acknowledge uh, two critical, vital staff who are here with me today who are leading our efforts within Austin Travis County. That's Ms. Vina Vissenwathen and Ms. Vicki Bailey. All stand up so they can lead, uh, to see you all there. <laughs> Many of you are familiar with Vina and Vicki, so we appreciate having them there. Um, I'm going to, I have a lot of slides, but I'll try to get through them as quick as possible. I'm already only have five minutes, so hopefully I can get my other uh, 10 minutes to, to be able to uh, facilitate this. Thank you for the opportunity to join you today and talk about our community health assessment and community health improvement plan. It's very important to the citizens of Austin Travis County that we do this and we do it right. So we started off in our efforts with a collaboration and that collaborative is made up of many partners. The presentation that you'll see at the bottom will be the list of many of the collaborators, not all, but many of those that are part of our efforts. We have the city, the county, Seton Healthcare, St. David's Central Health, which is our uh, Travis County Health uh, District, University of Texas Health Science Center, School of Public Health at Houston, Austin Regional Campus. Uh, for those from UUT, I make sure I get that right. And we have most of our social service agencies, which is part of the One Voice Network in the city of Austin and Travis County that represented the social service community in our efforts. Today I want to talk a little bit with you about actually what we've done and spend a little time of how we went about doing that. I want to talk about how we organize for success, how we conduct our assessments, identify priority issues and focus areas, implementation of our action cycle and CQI process, which is so vital to this, and implementing our next steps. It's important to note that in Austin Travis County, we were unique in the fact that we were able to receive one of the 12 demonstration projects funding from Robert Wood Johnson and from <coughs> NACHO with regards to this effort. It is key as you go into this to understand that there are going to be some resources needed to undertake this effort. We were fortunate to be one of 12 to be selected to participate in this process. We're the only one in Texas, we're proud to say. Having said that though, we also recognize that there's a lot of work and a lot of time. One of the things Teresa mentioned earlier is time is so important in understanding this. NATO gave us a year to complete this process. One of the le lessons learned from this process is a year, at least in our case, really was not adequate. However, we've done the best we can given the time constraints we've had in doing this. The other thing that's important in terms of resources as we go through this process is that in order to do this, this is not something that the city had funded or budgeted, and I would imagine most of yours did not. So what we begin a partnership and a collaboration by starting off, by letting our partners know that they would help to help us underwrite this effort. And most of them have been very supportive of that effort. So the dollars that we've got to undertake this were additional dollars beyond just what we got from NACHO in, able to, in order to help do that. We had a uniquely uh, specific type of an assessment we attempted to do. We looked at intergovernmental, hospitals, social service agencies, public health systems. So it's not the Austin Travis County Health and Human Services Department uh, community health assessment. It's the Austin Travis County community health assessment. And we emphasize that because the deliverables that come out of this, in terms of the CHIP, there will be some things that the department will be responsible for, but these other agencies and hospitals and organizations have also agreed to implement those aspects of that. As I mentioned, we were uh, received our, uh, as part of our accreditation effort dollars to be able to do this. Three components I've already mentioned, so I won't re-emphasize those for accreditation. Of course, you have to have your uh, strategic plan, 
you have to have the community health assessment, and you have to have the community health improvement plan. In terms of a community health improvement planning, we had various aspects, many of which have already been discussed, so I won't elaborate that much on them, but certainly engaging the community members of both the health, human services, and other systems in our community. Collaborate with partners were so very important in terms of that effort. It is absolutely important that you collaborate with partners. Help to understand health disparities in community. One of our focus was the social determinants of health in terms of addressing this community health assessment. So we made sure that health disparities in our community were part of the assessment. Enable community leaders to establish health priorities based on community needs. We looked at the community as not only as a whole, but as subsets within the whole. Satisfy grants and nonprofit organizational hospital needs. We've heard earlier about the IRS requirements for the hospitals. One of the ways we were able to incentivize both St. David's and Seton to participate is because of the IRS requirements that they have and the dollars they put into it was based upon the reality that they plan to get something out of it for that effort. As mentioned earlier, we use the modified MAP project. I won't go through all of this, but as mentioned earlier by Teresa, we looked at the engagement process, organizing for success, for MAPs uh, assessment, identify strat uh, strategic issues. We went through that process as part of our efforts to uh, do our assessment. Now I want to emphasize uh, the key components of organizing for success because from the beginning we recognized we have to have a strategic plan in order to complete this in a year. So we had our six core agencies were active participants and leaders throughout the community health assessment. We didn't just talk about them participating, they were actually engaged. This planning built a strong foundation and established sound structures for our organization. So it wouldn't be that this is just the health department's effort, but this is the community effort. We had a steering committee which was responsible for overseeing the whole process. And on that steering committee, we had representatives from all of these agencies, which were the governing process for this effort. So it wasn't just the health director, it wasn't just a, a district director, it was all of these agencies that participated. We also develop a core coordinating committee which serves as the overall steward of the process. Oh, these are the workers bees. These are the ones who took us from the assessment into the chip. They met weekly, sometimes even daily, to be able to make sure that the process that we were undertaking involved all of the strategies, all of the steps that we needed. One of the important part was the data and research subcommittee for the CHAR, which identified and gathered the data analyze each key and health and human services data, and they work to make sure that the data not only from our department, for, but from all of the partners' department, as well as other data that was available from the social service uh, community was also representative on this process. But the CHIP process, the data and research committee was very important because all of the data from our epidemiology, from our social service system, from the hospitals, all of that had to be gathered synthesized, organized, and produced in such a manner that could be useful and unified in the community and for our data, and for our efforts. We started, important to note, as vision and mission. And so we had to come at the beginning with a vision for the community. What would that be? And we all had to agree on that. And we did that through a visioning process which resulted in a vision that healthy people are the foundations of our thriving community. And that the mission of that was our community, individuals and organizations, public, private, nonprofits, worked together to create a healthy and sustainable Austin Travis County. Not Health and Human Services Department, not Seton Hospital, but community for Austin and Travis County. And that's so important to make sure from the beginning we know what that vision is so as we go through the steps we can uh, make sure that we are achieving that. Uh, we had goals of attainment. One is to examine the current health status across the entire city and the county. As my predecessors indicated, we looked at the city, the county, and the subsets within those. To explore the current health concerns among residents, not just what the data told us, but also what the residents shared with us. And to identify community strengths, resources, forces of change. What's going on in our community that we need to be aware of as we go through the process of developing this assessment? as well as the gaps in services to address the issues that we identified. 
It was important that we, as I said earlier, talk about the social determinants of health. What are the driving factors beyond just health that are causing these problems in terms of our community? So the definition of our assessment would be a broad uh, understanding of assessment and not just a health only assessment. In, term, in terms of community health status, we did a variety of data gathering. One is reviewed existing, existing data sources, national, state, and local. So we looked at demographics, social, physical environment, health behavior and outcomes, and health care access and resources. We developed through a process of a variety of, of methods, a community themes and strength based upon those forces of change. We interviewed over 300 participants engaged in our forums, focus groups, and interviews. We have focus groups within the four precincts of Travis County. So we went countywide and developed forums to be able to gather data from the individual community residents. We had 14 focus groups that focus in on those high priority areas in terms of issues for health and social change. We interviewed 28 key informant interviews. These are policymakers, key leaders, social uh, agencies heads, as well as uh, community organizations in our community. And we used findings from 25 key informant interviews that were conducted by the Travis County Healthcare District uh, Central Health Connection Leader Dialogue Series, which happened to be going on right as we were beginning our community health assessment. So that whole aspect of using knowledge, utilizing what's out there is very important. Those priority, priority sectors we included, I won't go through them all, but here they are basically economics, public safety, behavioral health, hospitals, we also look at the uh, communities of color, African American, Asian, Latino, aging, disabled, all of those communities that were disproportionately impacted by the social determinants of health and involve them in both the focus groups, the interviews, as well as the uh, community forums. The community members and partners were invited together in the CHIP work group. So after we've developed our efforts, there were four areas that we focused on that came out of our assessment. And at the end of the presentation, I will provide for you our website in which you can find our community health assessment. Those work group were responsible for doing several things. One, establish each of these four priority areas. So we had to focus in on chronic disease, focusing in on obesity. This is what the uh, assessment told us, so this is that area we focus on. Built environment. One of the two of the critical areas there was access to healthy food. One of the things we constantly heard in the community is the need to have access to healthy food. The second one was transportation. How do we get access to the community? One of the things about Austin and Travis County is a centrally core community. But with the gentrification impact in our development, we're seeing communities being forced out. So having access to the community to be able to get back to work to get to health care, to get healthy foods were a critical issue. And then accessing to primary care and mental behavioral health with a focus on navigating the health care system. One of the things we kept understood, hearing was the community clearly understands there's a lot of services, but how do we navigate it? How do we get through to it? How do I utilize it? Am I eligible for it? How does it work? All of those things are critical aspects in terms of what we heard from our community. And so therefore, it was rated as one of the high areas. Formulating goals and uh, strategies. Our CHIP work groups are in the process now, as we go into the CHIP implement, uh, process, of developing goals, objectives, evidence-based strategies, performance measures, and activities for each of the four primary areas. So as we transition from the assessment into addressing those four areas, these are the things we have to develop. And part of the process we are utilizing is utilizing work groups that came out of the chip to be able to focus in on those areas. And it's a very intense area. We have been able to, uh, through the resources, to contract with HRIA, which is a Health Resources in Action, a national group that actually was doing a similar kind of assessment in San Antonio, and we've been able to use them to help us through this process. And so they are assisting us in formulating those goals, objectives, evidence-based strategies, and indicators. And they're doing it in the sense that it's a collaborative effort, and once again, not on part of the department. 
It is important to remember that action cycle and the CQI process. We absolutely must make sure this is a continual process. One of the things the department and the community is con convinced on is that in quality improvement is the core of what we're doing. So we're utilizing quality planning and improvement tools, action plans, implementing, implementing the process is important for us to be able to identify that. And of course, evaluating the process once we've been able to develop the chip and of course, continuously going on over and over as part of the commitment to this effort as well. Our next step is our agency strategic planning. We're in the process now of incorporating within our department's agency the components, the resources we're gonna to need to implement for our department. At the same time, the hospitals, the social service agencies, the other agencies are gonna be asked to do the same thing. They're gonna to have to take what we receive from the, chop, from the CHIP work groups, those activities, how do we fund them? How do we implement them? What is it gonna cost? How can we collaborate? How are we going to get the resources to do what we said we're going to do? It is important in terms of identifying resources that we will have to go back to the taxpayers in other places, go to the private sector, and go to other communities to help us to be able to fund those specifically, those specific recommendations. Lessons learned, of course, has been said before, strong partnership is the way to go. And don't wait until you enter the process to do that. Make sure you're looking at it from the beginning. Who are the partners who you want to bring to the table in that process? Organizing and planning takes a while, but it's worth it. We spend a lot of time at the very beginning deciding who is critical for what, who do we want to be part of this, who has resources, what plans already exist in order to make that happen. Another key important is having the right person. And we're, from the beginning, we hired the right person to help lead us through that process. So I emphasize to you, when you're looking, by, looking to hire or identify a lead for this, make sure you get the right person to do that. Community engagement is essential, as we said. The process is very, always iterative. Don't sweat the small stuff. That's so important. It's a lot of process, so don't get bogged down in small stuff because rest assured, there's a lot of heavy lifting you have to do. Always allow time, even though nature didn't give us a lot of time, we feel good that we've produced a product, but our product will continue even once we submit our, our, our uh, chip to nature. We're planning to go back and update it and utilize it as it's consistent for the community, even if it means more time to do that. And then of course, celebrate su success. That is so important to make sure that you're successful to incorporate the community and others in that celebrating of success. And then a few recommended resources, I think some of these we've shared with you. It's important that you look at the Natro a toolbox. It really helped us a lot in terms of addressing some of the skill sets and some of the tools we needed. And so I would emphasize that, but also these as well. And then finally, uh, our, our, our CHA is on our website and I've listed it here for you. And it's also in your package. Feel free to go on it, look at it. Uh, and utilize it as you feel appropriate. We're certainly happy to answer any questions in terms of our efforts, uh, should you want to call us, but uh, we appreciate the opportunity to share our experience with you uh, here at, at the conference. Thank you. Thank you.